Estonia has always uh, supported Ukraine. Uh, we have pushed this Ukrainian membership in the Euro European Union um, on every every level uh, that we have the discussions. Um, definitely, when we were joining NATO, uh, we were also joining the European Union, and it was a two-track two approach, really, uh, when, when one door was closing, the other one was opening. Therefore, I think um, Ukraine is having this fight. Uh, Ukraine is uh, fighting for Europe right now, quite literally. Uh, therefore, I think we should also uh, give them a European perspective. Right. Uh, obviously, uh, perspective is the important w word. Uh, we know it takes time uh, to uh, really become a member of the European Union. Uh, do you think that it should be and it could be fast track? Because we know some members are not so much in favor of that. European Union is uh, comprised of uh, 27 democracies and of course democracies uh, very much depend on their public opinion and democracies uh, take a much longer time than, than autocracies uh, decision making process. But uh, we definitely have to respect that. But right now it seems to me that uh, it is very important for Ukrainians to give hope. Uh, to show Ukrainians that we are with them. We are considering Ukraine as part of Europe, uh, what they definitely are. So what are the concrete steps to give them this hope uh, is, is under discussion. But I think, you know, firm political uh, message would al already be something. Right. Uh, while this is uh, being discussed, obviously there are some concrete steps that have been taken. Uh, some are calling it actually a sea change. Uh, we're seeing very strong sanctions from the European Union, and we are even seeing uh, some weapons uh, delivery. Uh, the EU foreign policy chief, uh, Joseph Borrell, even mentioned fighter jets. I mean, what's your reading of uh, this very uh, quick uh, trend in a uh, uh, big change, I should say, in European policy? We have been, um, I mean, we in Estonia have been uh, talking about Russia's intentions for, for some time, but um, maybe not all our, all our allies were listening uh, as, as carefully. Uh, now, uh, definitely what happened on the 24th of uh, February opened uh, many eyes and, and, uh, and maybe erase some naivety uh, towards Russia. And therefore, as we are in a totally new uh, area, a totally new security situation, then um, Europe uh, must do everything to prevent this war to go even further. Therefore, it's, it's very important that uh, Russia will lose this war. Right. I mean, uh, one option uh, that might be on the table is a no-fly zone. Would you be in favor of establishing such a no-fly zone over Ukraine? Uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we have uh, uh, made decisions uh, in Europe uh, that uh, Russian planes can't uh, use our airspace. But, uh, but no-fly zone would definitely help to protect Ukraine. Right. Uh, do you think that the, the sanctions are already having an effect uh, on uh, Russia's economy and possibly on Russia's president? Well, if you look at uh, the currency rate of ruble, uh, then it has dropped uh, considerably. And, and definitely it has an effect if you look at the, uh, you know, the... Um, the uh, pictures that we get from, from Russia regarding the bank run and, and everything, um, it is having an effect um, on their economy, definitely. And, and also some of the people, also oligarchs speaking out uh, against the war, um, could have an effect on, on Putin's uh, thinking or, or his uh, people around him. But, uh, but if it is having effect right now uh, so that he stops the war, um, it is up to him to decide. But uh, hopefully he makes such, uh, such uh, observations that he doesn't have to or he, there's no point in continuing. He can't win this war. Right. Uh, what he has done uh, is to uh, put uh, the so-called deterrence force on high alert. Uh, this must be a worrying sign for you. 
Of course, uh, everything that he does is a worrying sign, uh, and uh, and definitely um, what he has said about the uh, nuclear weapons. I think uh, this uh, this statement is directed to the public opinion of uh, you know the Western allies to scare uh, scare them off of making additional steps. But I think we shouldn't be scared. We should be firm in our stance and, and make our, uh, you know, steps uh, uh, further in order to stop this war. Right. Uh, are you uh, afraid uh, of potential Russian act actions? We know uh, several countries, including France, have sent military reinforcement to your country and all other Baltic uh, states. Uh, are you calling on NATO to send even more military uh, means to Estonia and its neighbors? We don't see any military threat at our borders right now, uh, and uh, it's not directed to us. But uh, we have started the Article 4 consultations in, in NATO. What it means is that NATO will go to its uh, defense mode from the deterrence mode that we were before. Uh, what does it mean? It does mean that all the you know enhanced forward presence uh, air policing mission, they will be turned into defense Uh, missions really, uh, and and uh, also the strengthening of the eastern flank is is part of it. We have been talking about this for years already. If you look at the Baltic states, we are like a peninsula in terms of uh, NATO, but uh, but now uh, all these plans are enacted and and we go into the defense mode. It doesn't mean that uh, we have any threat at our borders right now, but uh, we have to prepare. Right. Uh, something else you have to prepare for, uh, and other countries as well, is uh, a possible flow of refugees uh, from uh, Ukraine. Uh, do you think the EU is uh, really ready to open its doors uh, to Ukrainians? Uh, because this also uh, would be a sea change. We've seen so many controversies in Europe about uh, migrants and refugees in the past years. Well, we definitely are going to see war refugees coming from Ukraine, and we also have to, you know, make steps to help them. Uh, but also, I think what would help them the most is that we end this war uh, really quickly, so all these people can return to their home homeland. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, when they are in Europe, uh, we have to help them, um, so um, because they are uh, fleeing from from the war. Madam Prime Minister, you know, in the past couple of days, we have seen uh, Russia being increasingly isolated on the world stage. Russian banks have been kicked out of the SWIFT banking system. There's a no-fly zone for Russian aircraft uh, to land in Europe, so they cannot land at this point in time. They've been kicked out of the Eurovision uh, contest. Uh, no Russian flags will be uh, visible at football matches. Uh, What does all this mean to you, this isolation of Russia? What impact uh, do you imagine it having on Vladimir Putin? First of all, it means that uh, Russia has become a rogue state. And uh, this only in a few days, really, and only because of the actions of, of Putin, uh, really. So uh, we know that the uh, propaganda in Russia is showing this picture in a totally different way. But, uh, but uh, you know, Russia will feel this uh, on their skin, uh, so to say, uh, that Putin's actions also have an effect uh, on the whole of the country. Uh, so so uh, meaning that all these people that really represent the country, um, you know, get the signal that, uh, that Russia is a rogue state due to the aggression that they have started against Ukraine. You know, earlier today I interviewed uh, Finland's former Prime Minister Alexander Stubb and he told me the problem we have in the West is we don't know which way Vladimir Putin will be influenced. Do you share that assessment? Mm. We uh, we know that uh, with all the autocrats, um, you know, they they isolate themselves uh, from from other people, and and you know the circle gets smaller and smaller of whom they really uh, listen to, and and also we know that uh, that not all the information goes through to him, so maybe he doesn't see um, the whole big picture, what is really happening, how Russia's uh, armed forces are really doing in Ukraine, not so good. Um, 
um, as as they were hoping for, I guess. So so uh, you know nobody sees uh, into his head, but uh, but clearly he's having this uh, very clear mind about Ukraine and and it not uh, being a sovereign state. Um, his will is to destroy Ukraine, and we have to stand up against this. Uh, last question, Mrs. Prime Minister. Uh, NATO was declared by the French president kind of brain dead uh, uh, just a few months ago. Uh, do you think that Vladimir Putin has, in a way, revived and reunited NATO like no one else could have done? You could say so, that uh, that look at the positive side on the NATO's or even European Union. It is definitely the unity that we have achieved from this, that we are, uh, you know, very unified and, and strong together, which is uh, very important to us as well. And what comes to NATO, uh, you know, the discussions that we see within NATO are exactly as we thought uh, these discussions uh, should be regarding NATO. We are talking about defense plans. We are talking about, you know, uh, uh, strengthening um, uh, you know, NATO uh, and defense and deterrence posture. Uh, this is uh, definitely something uh, that is uh, NATO's uh, substance because it's, uh, it's a defensive alliance. So clearly, um, it, it is a positive, it has positive effect on, on NATO's unity.